says oh, that yeah, my Lord yeah. is good. There are many ways to taste the thing. Yes. And Father, I want to take sample all of them. Yes. I yes. want to yes. sample everyone. Yes. I don't want to just sample you. I want to just in, have you engulf me. Yes. Have yes. you enrich me. Yes. Have you empower me. Yes. Yes. Have you yes. just uh, wrap your arms yes. around me yes. 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 so I can taste you in every yes. way. Yes. 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 David said, my soul thirsts for you. Yes. And soul. his body yearns. Yes. For yes. God yes. this morning, I'm yearning. Yes. Decrease, I die that you would yes. live in me yes, yes, and live Lord. through me. Yes, I decrease, Lord. Father, that I you would am. have your way in this yes, house of God. Yes, yes, on this holy ground yes, that we stand yes, today. Yes. Yes. Have your way to have your way. Let your word, your word, yes. 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 Your word, yes. your word yes. come to yes. your servant. Let yes. your, word, your word, word be spoken to your people. Let your, your word, word yes. be resonating in their ears. That yes. 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 Let them hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. The Spirit of the Lord, we say, speak today. Yeah, have your way. Have your way. Yeah, have your way. Yeah, have your way. Let your fire burn in us this Yes. Let your fire burn through us this day. Yes. Let your fire burn in us this day. Burn us up, God. Yes. Burn us up, God. Yes. Burn us up, God. Yes. There's nothing left of us. No fragments. No debris. No residue. Burn us up today, God. Yes. That you speak everything that you unction, yes. Father. We will follow it to the yes. very direction yes. that you give us. Hallelujah. Burn us up today, O oh God, yes. and have your way up in this place. Yes, Lord. Now, Father, in the name of Jesus, yes. Lord, we say, Speak, Lord. Speak, Lord. Yes, we are listening. Speak, Lord. Yes. Speak, Lord. Because we want the word from you, not James. Yes, Lord. We want the word from you. Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank I have nothing Lord. to say. Yeah, but you speak, Lord. Yes, Lord. And have Lord. your way in this place. Thank you, Lord. For in the name that's above every name. Yes, Lord. That name is Jesus. Yes, Lord. That name is the magnificent. Yes, Lord. That name is the powerful. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Your name to the yes, Lord. Hallelujah. We glorify you. Today. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We magnify you. Today. Yes. Thank you, Lord. And we honor your name today. Yes. Thank you, Lord. For your name is the sweetest name that I know. Yes. Matter of fact, your name really is the only name yes. I can know. No, come on, man. I don't need to know anybody else. Uh -uh. Yes, I don't particularly care to know any other name. Amen. I don't need Buddha. I don't need Krishna. Uh -huh. I don't need them self-help folks. Yeah. Yeah. I don't need a, a, a book to tell me how to worship you. Yeah. Yeah. I just need you to tell me how to preach. Yes. Tell me what you want today. Yes. Thank you, Lord. And we'll do it. Thank yes. you. We bless and honor you today. Yes. Yes. Let everyone say amen. Amen. Give the Lord a hand to I honor the Lord this morning. Amen. My husband. Amen. Amen. Mighty man of God. Amen. Pastor Greg Hadley. Amen. My sister in the Lord. Amen. We may not be blood sisters, but we about as close as we're going to get. Amen. That's my sister right there. Amen. To my other sister, Apostle Angela Frederick. Amen. Amen. This is what we said. Amen. <laughs> And to all my brothers and sisters here today. Yes. Yeah. Prophet Barbara. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Evangelist. Yes. Amen. Mighty woman of God. Amen. Amen. Speak those things. Speak those things. Amen. 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 I was listening for those, a word from the Lord, not just for here. But I was in my study time, uh -huh. and the Lord was talking about the law, law of sacrifice. All right. Thank and as I was studying, the question comes to mind: What have you given up to go up? All right. Everybody want to be elevated. Everybody All want right. position. Everybody want power. Everybody want prestige. Everybody want their name known. You know, folks want to be famous. They want to be rock stars, movie stars, TV stars, reality stars. Everybody wants something. Yeah. Everybody want to go up. They want to be raised up in some kind of way. Yeah. You know, we in the body of Christ, what we really desire, we most of us just want 
to live a life that's holy and righteous. Amen. But there are those, even in the church, that want something from God. Yeah. They want to go up. They want to be raised up. They want a, a position. They want a title. Unfortunately, folks that are so geeked and hyped on titles now, they can't do the work of the Lord for pursuing a title. Uh, they want to be apostle, a prophet, or evangelist, or somebody. Shoe shot jump. Uh, <laughs> But the question is, and I pose this question to everybody that is today, what have you given up to go up? All right. There's some things in this life that before God can even begin to use us, we got to give up. Yeah. We got to make a sacrifice of something. Uh -huh. We got to fast, we got to pray, but even beyond fasting and praying, because you can be fasting and smoking weed. Uh -huh. You can be fasting and going to the boat. I know folks, they on the fast and they on the casino, pulling on the one on the I know yeah. folks that said they praying and they laying up there with Pookie at the midnight uh -huh. hour. They're not giving up to receive the fruit of the Spirit. Right. They're still walking in the fruits of the enemy. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And they want to call the fact that they stopped cussing for a day a sacrifice. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. But they want God to raise them up. How you going to cuss like a sailor and God call you to preach? That stuff going to come out in your place. Yeah. Yeah. How are you going to go before the people of God and you just got out of the bed with somebody else's husband? Right. Or got off the phone gossiping or lying or cheating? Mm -hmm. You want God to use you, but you ain't willing to give up the right. 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 We have to be willing to die to ourselves. Yeah, we yeah. were in a conference this weekend, and the word that always kept going forth was kill it. Yeah. Yeah. Kill it. Uh -oh. I preached kill a few it. weeks ago, and my message was kill it. Uh -huh. We are not killing the things that are keeping us from the fullness of God. Amen. So my question to you today is, what have you given up? To go up. Or better still, what are you willing to give up yeah. to go up? Come on. Yeah. Yeah. You don't want God to raise you up. What you willing to give up? Come on. Some people just don't want to give up anything. So I was through the Bible and I looked at some mighty people of God that were willing to sacrifice. Just to get more of God. If you really want more of God, you're going to have to die to some stuff. Amen. You have to give up some things. You have to let go of some things. And before I take you to my scripture text, I want to tell you Abraham. Everybody knows Abraham. Yeah, everybody knows Abraham. You know what Abraham's sacrifice was? When God told him to leave the land, he was comfortable. Right. First of all, he gave up security. Yeah. He gave up rich land. Yeah. And he gave up success. Yes. Yeah. We will get a, a, a modicum of, 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 of success, and what we will do with that little bit of success is we'll hold on to it. Yeah. Right? We're holding on to this. Uh -huh. I got this little success. I can't let it go. Yeah. Yeah. But God is trying to give you more. Yeah. So Abraham had security. He had land. He had success. But God said, let all that go. Because mm -hmm. I got something better for you. Yeah. Yeah. We hold on to this little box mm -hmm. like it's the last thing on earth. Mm -hmm. Like that little candy in there that all God has for us. And God is saying, I'm trying to give you richer. I'm trying to give you greater. I'm yeah. trying to yeah. bless you. Amen. But you want to hold on to these crumbs because mm. you think that's all I got for you. I am not a crumb God. All right. Exactly. God is not a God of crumbs. Abraham gave up all of that to become the father of nations. Yes, he did. All he had to do was trust God. All we have to do is trust God. Mm -hmm. But the thing that we don't want to give up in my scripture. First of all, I want you to go over to James 4 and T. Because we want to be lifted up. But we sometimes don't want to wait on God to lift us up. No. That's right. We don't want to let God raise us up. We don't want God to. He never told Abraham that he would make him famous. What did he tell Abraham? I will make your name great. But we running around looking at fame. The Lord said a, 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 about a year ago that the spirit of fame can come over the church. We got a spirit of fame in the church. Because of what we watch on TV. Right. We got a spirit of fame because we hear folks on the radio. We got a spirit of fame because we see folks traveling all around the world preaching whatever they preaching. So this spirit of fame came over the church because now we want that too. We got happy preaching to the people that God has assigned to us. We want mega church. We want a two point three million dollar church when we got two hundred dollars a month in offering. We not satisfied with what God gave us. We're not satisfied reaching the souls that are twenty seven. 
Templeton Highland, we got to run out here by worlds of fun, fill a three million dollar building, and then we got to tell folks you got to tie to get four and five to twelve offerings and hundred dollar lines and five hundred dollar lines because you're trying to pay for a building. You can't eat yourself because you got to pay for the building. But we wanted this mess because we saw it on TV and it looked good. Come on, James. 4 and 10 says, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up. We can't humble ourselves for being too busy, being busy, yeah. trying to let folks know who we are. Oh, I, I, preach. I got to be on the preaching circuit. Oh, I got to have a speaking engagement. I got to get out here and let my name be known. I'm going to be the next Joyce Meyer. I'm going to be the next T.D. Jakes. I'm going to be the next Creflo Dollar. I want my name known. We're so busy walking in pride that we can't humble ourselves before oh, God. God and let God raise us up. Come on, man. Come, come on. We got to let the enemy trick us into getting in a position we're not ready for. The Bible says we got to be careful about when we put novices in position because that thing will set them up in pride, set them up on a place where they're going to fall and it's going to bring reproach. Because we can't humble ourselves and let God do it. We can't sit out the seasons that God has to nurture us and grow us and get us ready to preach the word that no matter where we go or what we do, if we walk in the church and they say, God said, you got a word today, you can get up and be instant in season and preach a word. You got to get up there and apologize because you ain't ready because you know you ain't got enough word in you to fight sleep. Not to sleep, not to sleep. You can't even fight sleep with that teenage bit of word in you that God said that if you would sit and let him raise you up, Because God wants us to be in position where we can do whatever it is that we are called to do regardless Amen. of the season, regardless of the time, regardless of the adversity in your life. You ought to be ready to get up and preach and you all hell might be breaking loose in your life, but when God is in your life, you can still get up and do what you call it. And if you've got enough confidence to know God going to bring you out. 1 Peter 5 and 6 also says, Therefore humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Yes. Amen. Casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Yes. So when we humble ourselves before the hand of God, when we humble ourselves, when we begin to just let God do this thing in us, no matter what's going on, God got your back. Got you. Casting your cares on him. Casting your stuff on him. Leaving it to God to do the thing that he said he would do. Yes. Because we're ready to sacrifice. Mm -hmm. if, if we sacrifice, God's job is to promote. Uh -huh. yeah. If we sacrifice, that's his job. If, if we will just stoop down, you know they say stoop down. Which means bow down. God gonna raise us up. Yes. 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 But we got to be willing to bow down. If you will lower yourself, God will take you high. But we want to come out the gate high and lift it up. We want to come out the gate with our name known. We want to come out the gate with all this junk in our trunk and expect the Lord to do something. Let's look at Moses. Moses was. A prince in the royal palace in Egypt. He had everything. He had land, he had cars, he had houses. He had all of the things that we think we need. But he gave all of that up to be the deliverer of Israel. Yes, he did. He had it all up. Yes, he did. He walked away from it. But we don't want to walk away from gossip. 
Right. We don't want to walk away from fornicating. Mm. We don't want to walk away from hot sheets and, 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 and warm thighs. Mm. We want to stay in a position and still want God to raise us up. Mm. Watch out. Watch out. Jesus' disciples Watch out. gave everything they had. Yes, they did. Those disciples gave everything. Walked away from businesses, careers, positions, yes, families to be leaders of the church. I didn't say leaders in the church. I said leaders of the church. church. There is a big difference. Yes, yes, it is. They gave everything they had to be leaders of the church. Yes. And now we want to come in, be sitting in the chair for two or three days, and want Pastor Sarah to so. put us in position. Uh, yeah. I we want apostle, we want to go over the love covenant, be there four days, and we want to now be a don't ordained an apostle or a prophet. I've been here four days, don't you see my gifts? Don't you know who I am? Don't you know that I got all y'all, they raising me up to do this and do that? Don't you know Pastor Greg, who I, where I come from? Don't you know I travel with so-and-so, and I was in so-and-so's choir? Don't you know that you need to put me in the choir too? Because we want to be exalted. We want to be raised up. We want to be lifted up. We don't want to humble ourselves. We got so much weak folks in the church, for real, they can't fight sleep. There ain't no power in them. They up there speaking in tongues, tongues you ain't never heard of. They up there talking about proper lying over you and all laying hands on you. Don't go around laying hands on folks and you don't know where that spirit be. Don't know where that spirit be. What have you given up to go up? Have you given up adultery? Mm. Have you given up sexual immorality? Mm. Have you given up uncleanness? Mm. Have you given up lust? Have you given up idolatry? Mm. Have you given up sorcery and witchcraft? Have you given up that horoscope yeah. mess? Yeah. Have you given up hatred, yeah. quarreling? Every time you walk in a church, you shouldn't be, folks shouldn't be quarreling. You walk in your house, they arguing. There's factions and divisions in the church. This side of the church don't like that side of the church. Yeah. That side over there don't want to be bothered with that side over there. You got all these divisions and cliques in the church because they don't want to talk to nobody. They don't want to stand correction. You got folks in the church that can't stand correction. They don't want to be corrected. They don't want to sin like you know. You know, girl. You shouldn't be looking at that woman husband. But the Lord said that was my husband. The devil is alive. Why we can't do things because 
simply for the glory of God, why we got to let everybody know that we come in and clean up the church? Why we got to let everybody know that on our job we did this? We want to be employee of the month. We want to have all of this stuff because we got selfish ambition. And we cannot trust God enough to do the thing that he said he would do in our life. Amen. We got dissensions. We got envy. We got murder. We got drunkenness. Yes. We got all of these things. Love you. We got all of these things that we operate in. Mm -hmm. Drunkenness. We come in the church drunk. We come in the church. I probably got it on right for this we got these things in us. Yeah. And we want God to raise us up. These are fruits of the enemy based on Galatians 5.19. It ain't something I made up. Right. Mm -hmm. You go to Galatians 5.19, you see every single one of these. Mm -hmm. And every one of them says that God can't raise you up. Now go over to 1 Corinthians 6. Where my scripture at? 6 and 9. Go over there. Write these down. Please. Galatians 6 and 9. I'm sorry, 1 Corinthians 6 and 9. My bad, my bad. This thing keeps falling down. You went there, you went there. We used to it. 6 and 9. First Corinthians 6 and 9 says, Do you not know? So he poses a question to you. Do you not know? That the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God. Inherit means to what? To receive. To receive. To possess. To get something that you are by, by, by birthright entitled to. Whether it's physical birth or spiritual birth. Mm -hmm. Inherit something. If I say I'm going to leave some money to you in my will, by a right, you are entitled to that money. Mm -hmm. So it says here. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Don't be fooled. Don't let the enemy trick you. Don't let the enemy lie to you. Don't let the enemy tell you stuff that is all jacked up, that's going to cause you to lose your inheritance. Do not be deceived about your inheritance. The enemy may tell you that you have no inheritance. The enemy may tell, may tell you that God is not going to give you anything. The enemy may tell you this. That you ain't worthy of it. Here's something right here. The enemy has a bad habit of telling folks that they're not worthy of anything. Yeah. Man. That you don't deserve it. You don't, we don't deserve it. It's by God's grace. Yeah, yeah. That you're not worthy of it, so don't expect it. Mm -hmm. You're not worthy to have a husband that loves you. All you want to do is have men that beat on you. You're not worthy of having a job that pays you $25 an hour. All you want to do is ever make $8 an hour. Well, the devil is a lie. Right. 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 Because God wants to give you an inheritance. He made it. The enemy will say, you may not ever preach the word of God. Uh -huh. God says, I want you to preach. I want you to prophesy. I want you to go ye. Mm -hmm. You ye. Ye, 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 ye. You ye. Go ye. Into all nations. What? Teaching and what? Baptizing. Preaching that word. Teaching the word. Exhorting the word of God. So when he tells you the lie that you don't have an inheritance, you know what you're supposed to do? Give him the word. Amen. For it is written. It is written. Yes. It is written. Y'all say, it is written. It is written. And you give him the word of God. Amen. He says, do not be deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. Amen. Here's the part I like. And such were some of you. Mm -hmm. Come on now, man. He works on. And yeah. such mm -hmm. were some of us. Mm -hmm. As such right. was some of us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm just get that one in your spirit now. Mm -hmm. At some point in our life, mm -hmm. and such mm -hmm. was some of us. Amen. At one point in my life, I, I was a drinker. Yeah. And let's just get the list right now. Right. At some point in my life, yeah. I was sexual, sexually immoral. Mm -hmm. That means I was sleeping with folks when not my husband. Right. right. At some point, I was lusting. Uh -huh. And such 
were some of you. At some point I was hating on folks, hated folks, hated myself, and such were some of you. I was quarreling, wouldn't, didn't mind arguing with you, would argue to the grave, and such were some of you. Jealous, angry, always mad, had some selfish ambition, and such were some of you. Division, envy, murder you with my mouth, talk about you like a dog, and get out and go get drunk and party all night, and such were some of you. We all have fallen short of the glory of God. But you were, here's the best part, but you were washed, but you were sanctified. But you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. We have all been and done. We have all been something and done something. Anybody said to you, they ain't never done nothing, the devil is alive. And such were some of you. The Apostle Paul was a leader of the Pharisees. He was a leader among the Pharisees, one of the chief ones. And he gave up all that leadership to become the greatest apostle in history. Yes. What are you willing to give up of your own? Here, let me do this. What are you willing to give up? Maybe we'll stay up there with this. And I'm having a moment here. What are you willing to give up to get the fullness of God? What are you willing to lay down on the altar to get the fullness of God? The fullness, not the crumbs off the table, but what are you willing to give up to get all that God has for you? What, no matter what it is, there's some things that God's telling us to give up. It may not even be a physical thing like this plant. It may be something inside of you. You may have been abused as a child. And God is saying, let that go. So I can use you. Yeah. Some of the things that we are required to let up and not always sins. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's just things that hurt us from our past or our, or our present. And God says, you got to let it go. Some of us got to let go of fear. Yes. Amen. God says, just let go of the fear. Let go of fear so I can use you. Mm -hmm. Let go of the doubt so I can use you. Let go of the negativity so I can use you. Just let go. And God will begin to raise us up. What are you willing to give up so that God can raise you up? What are you willing to let go of so that God can raise you up like, like he wants to, like he desires to? God desires to do some great things in his people. Yes. Sometimes the lower we have to go means the higher he has to raise us up. You understand that? Yeah. If you're standing on that chair and he tell you that this is not low enough, I'm standing right here, he said, this is not low enough. Get low. Try to step down. He said, that's not low enough. Get low. So what do you do? You get on your knees. He said, that's not low enough. So what do you do then? You get him down on your face. Breaking on down, breaking on down. You got to, sometimes you just got to keep, sometimes you just got to keep getting lower. So at one point when you have gotten low enough, broken enough, he can raise you up. I was sitting at this conference, Apostle Angel and I went to this weekend. And I was sitting in the chair just minding my own business. We had been there that Friday night and she preached and it was a phenomenal word and Saturday went back, we went back to support the other speaker. And I went to support her. So I'm sitting in the chair and I'm just writing notes. And I'm sitting there minding my own business. And I said, well Lord, if this prophet, because there was a powerful woman of God there from, she's a wife, but she was from Illinois somewhere. And I always made up my mind this, I was not a prophecy chaser. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be chasing the word. Right. Because right. you might get something that you didn't want. Yes. God didn't want you to have. Yes. Right. 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 So I'm sitting there in the chair and I said, Lord, I tell you what. If she got a word for me, 
you have to send that to me. Because I'm going to sit right in this chair, write my notes, and when I finish writing my notes, I sat with my eyes closed. And I was just talking to the Lord and just kind of worshiping. And I'm sitting there, and she comes, and I could hear her ask Apostle Angela, what was my name? And she said, and so Apostle Angela uh, touched me or something, and I opened my eyes, and I could hear her. And she said, come in. And I got up and went around the uh, pew and stood there. I'm not chasing a word. I'm not trying. I'm not going to get up and go to the front of the, the, the church so you can see me. Amen. I'm not going to get up there and go get in that prayer line so you can give me a word. Right. If God wants me to have a word, yeah. call me up. Yeah. Call me up. Amen. I'm not going to get up and go sit at the front of the church so you can ask me back. Mm -hmm. I don't care if I'm an apostle somebody, a doctor somebody, a shoe, who shot it. I'm going to sit right back here and if you need me to get a word, Lord, yeah. you do it. Amen. Yeah. Two minutes we running after stuff that's not for us. Two minutes we running after words, we running after folk, we running after stuff, and it's not for us in that season. Yeah. Yeah. Let God, and you know that when God motions you to come forward, they'll say something that don't nobody know about you in that come day. Come on, that's that's that person, come on, that's that's right. Right. Come on now. And she looked at me and said, when I came in the building last night and I looked at you, she said, I saw three things. She said, I saw the outer court, I saw the inner court, and I saw the holy of uh -huh. And I looked at her, and if everybody, I mean, been to our ministry, right. we got the Ark of the Covenant. Yes. We got the outer right. court, inner court, and holy of holy. Uh -huh. This woman had never laid eyes on me before. Uh -huh. You know, nothing about me, didn't right. know my name. Right. Mm -hmm. She said, but when I looked at you, I saw the outer court, the inner court, and the holy of holies. And you delight to teach, and that is where you live. Mm -hmm. She said, you live in a place of worship before God. And I'm going, yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's it. That's it. And she said, you always prepare everything for God with a spirit of excellence. Uh -huh. She said, no matter what you do, she said, I see a secret place. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. It's true. Uh -huh. She said, I see you in a secret place. That's true. So I'm standing here hearing these words. Knowing that this is a word that God is about to give me right. because he has confirmed who I am to her. Right. Yeah. 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 She ain't just yeah. come and shoot from the other yeah. yeah. try to pop out. Right. Right. We're going to need to say something so she can feed off uh -huh. of it right. and keep giving me right. that conjuring of the right. spirit. Yeah. Right. 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 That's a yes. familiar spirit. That ain't a problem. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes, so I knew that this woman was in a place at a specific time to give me a word that I needed to push me forward. Right. Mm -hmm. And she was. Mm -hmm. And that's why if you would just wait on God, mm -hmm. ooh, sit back in the cut. Yeah. Just sit back there. Yeah. And praise Him while you're there. Worship Him while you're there. Yeah. He's going to bring you forward. Yeah. Yeah. And He's going to give you a word. Yeah. He's going to bring you forward. And He's going to give you a word that's encouraging you, that's yeah. going to lift you up, that's going to bring you to a place that puts you forward, right. push you forward, Amen. and get you to another Amen. level. Amen. Right. Amen. It's going to get you to yeah. another level. Yes, if we will. would just wait they on the word. word. Yes. That's it, the word. The word. the word. And the word is not going to be something that's just off the top of her head. It's going to be something that God is confirming that's already in you. Yes. yes. She didn't know about the secret place. She didn't know about the prayer room. She didn't know about right. the, the Holy of Holies. Uh -huh. She never even been to Kansas right. behind the county of the ministry. Right. Right. She's from Hawaii, by Wales, Quincy, Illinois. All right. Mm -hmm. That's right. She didn't know. So when God is ready to put you in that next place, put you in that next seat, seat you in authority, seat you in a place where he can raise you up, he's going to let you know it in such a way that you know that you know that you know that you know that, you know that it's him. Yeah. Yeah. You're not going to have to go home and guess or say, That's right. I didn't understand that word. Now what does she mean? You can, God has already told you he's going to confirm his word. Right. But if we just lower ourselves, God will lift us. He will lift us up. Now look what Paul says in, I'm still in Galatians 1, 6, and 12. He said, all things are lawful for me. Let me break that down to you. No, say, I'm sorry, 1 Corinthians 6 and 9. Stay right there. Drop down to 12. Stay in 1 Corinthians 6, go to 12. Let's go to 12. It says in this version, all things are lawful for me, but all things are not helpful. This is what he's saying. 
The world says, I can do anything I want. But not everything is good for me. The world says, I can do anything I want. That's what the world says, right? That's what the world says. The Bible says here, all things are lawful for me. In my version on the floor, it says, I can do anything. The world says, I can do anything I want. But all, not everything is good for me. I can sleep with anybody I want. But eggs ain't good for me. Right. I can drink all the liquor I want. But cirrhosis of the liver ain't good for me. I can go in the store and steal all I want. But jail <laughs> Break it down like that. You can do anything you want. You can sleep with any man you want. That ain't your husband. But when you get a husband, trust me. That thing gonna come back on you. Amen. You'll be sleeping with somebody's husband today, and next year somebody gonna be sleeping with yours. That's right. So you can do anything you want. You can gamble all you want today, but be having your car repossessed ain't good. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. The world says I can do anything, but not everything is good for me. Mm. But I will not be brought under the power of any of it. The problem we have. But a lot of this stuff we're doing, see that it says, but I will not be brought under the power of it. I will not become a slave to it. Mm -hmm. A lot of the stuff we're doing, we become slaves to it in this society. Mm -hmm. Folks yeah. shopping, eating. Mm -hmm. People become a slave to eating. That's true. Lust. You be lusting after stuff you don't even want. Folks you don't even like. That's right. Lust is just lust. That's what you're doing. That's true. That's true. Lust is like lust. Right. You go around be lusting after another woman because you lust it so much. Uh huh. Ooh. Yeah. Lust don't care. It's true. No, no. Lust has no boundaries. No, no, no. Eat. Jealousy has no. You will be jealous of your own children if you don't check jealousy. Yeah. Right. 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 Mm -hmm. You think some, your little ten year old wants your boyfriend? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you don't check jealousy, yeah. that's true. Mm -hmm. This is real. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you don't check the thing that's controlling you, or that you got, a, that's got a hold of you, it will control you and put you in slavery. Yes, yes, right. It will put you in bondage. Yes, if you don't control gossiping, you open your mouth up in church to preach and you gossip. Right. Mm -hmm. You think you preaching and you gossip? Yeah. And you think you gossip mm -hmm. because that thing controls you. Hatred, you'll hate everybody yeah. and everything. Mm -hmm. You'll be so messed up on your job, you can't keep a job. I know folks that have had seven, eight jobs in a year. Because mm -hmm. they get on the job and can't keep their mouth closed. But they get on the job and try to tell the folks how to keep a job, how to run their business. You've been there 12, 5 days and you trying to tell me how to run my business. You come into the church, you've been there 7 days, you tell me how to run the church. Because you can't keep your mouth closed. Right. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Oh, my God. Yeah. You can't keep your mouth yeah. closed. Yeah. What are you willing to give up to go up? Yeah. The thing that Paul said right here. I will not be brought under the power of any of it. Mm -hmm. Some people are walking under the power mm -hmm. of the thing that's got them in bondage. Yeah. And they still want God to use them. It's not God using them. It's the enemy using them. Mm -hmm. Satan got him. Yes. He got him under his belt, under his foot, under his control. Satan got him. But the same fact of the matter is this. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Whatever controls you, owns you. Whatever controls you, owns you. My Bible tells me that I was bought with a price. And the price was Jesus on that cross. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So if I was bought with a price, why does sin own me? Why does lust own me? Why does jealousy own me? Why does alcoholism own me? If I was bought with a price, why does this stuff own me? Mm -hmm. Why is it controlling this member? That's true. Mm. All that I will not be controlled by any of it. Mm -hmm. Because he wanted God to raise them up to use him. We're supposed to want the Lord to use us in whatever capacity, whether we preach before one or one hundred or one hundred thousand. Right. Right. We're supposed to want God to use us in, to the fullest. Mm -hmm. We all ought to be ready to dial in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Doing everything that God told us to do before we was that baby's age. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. All of us in here right now should be walking in our purpose. Yes. 
walking in our calling. Every single one of us adults in here ought to be walking in our purpose. Mm -hmm. Whatever your purpose is, everybody has a different purpose. Mm -hmm. Everybody's got a, di a different gift and a different calling. But God cannot use our gifts and our callings until we get right. Mm -hmm. We'll be operating out of our flesh. Mm -hmm. Because the Bible says the gifts and calling come without what? Repentance. Okay. Because meaning he ain't going to take it back. Mm -hmm. You're going to still be able to sing. You'll still be able to dance or rap or whatever you do, but God will allow you to use it, but it won't be used to the full. It won't be as effective as it could be because you will be operating out of your flesh and that thing that controls you. If you got a Jezebel spirit, you'll be operating under that Jezebel spirit, tearing up stuff everywhere Where you go. Willing to murder folks to get your stuff, willing to kill folks. To have your way, yeah. Willing to sell your brother, your sister, your pastor, yeah. willing to throw them up under the bus to get what you want. Because you're operating on the Jezebel spirit. Because the world says I can do anything. Lies. 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 But not everything is good. good. That's right. That's right. There's a bunch of stuff I don't want to do. That's right. You know that. There's a bunch of stuff I leave alone. Um, yeah. Yeah. There's a bunch of stuff I'm staying away from. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because I know it's not good for me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I could go back. I could go over here and go to St. Louis right now and go back to the casino. Mm -hmm. Y'all ain't going to come to St. Louis. Mm -hmm. Put me on the casino. Uh -huh. uh -huh. I'll be up there pulling that slot machine on that roulette table, on that blackjack table, uh -huh. kicking it, winning, and having a good time. Uh -huh. But the one person that needs to know that's going to know mm -hmm. is God. That's yeah. right. Yeah. He's going to see it all and know it all and know that I'm backslid. Right. Back up on the boat. Right. 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 I don't see it. 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 I <laughs> yes, yes, I done slid right back up on the boat. I done slid right back up on the boat. Uh -huh. Slid back up between somebody's thighs. Uh -huh. That's right. See. He kissed me and my clothes fell off. Ah! Oh, the devil is a liar. <laughs> the devil is a liar. They still use the devil. The devil is a liar. Go with Revelation 5. Verse 11. So if I was bought with a price, the Lamb of God who came to be slaughtered, who now sits on the throne, if he sits on the throne, that means he's above all of us, right? Yes. Right? He's our leader. Yes, yeah. he is. He's head of everything. Everything. So Revelation 5 and 11 says this, Then I looked and I heard the voice of many angels around the throne, the living creatures and the elders, and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and a thousand of a thousand, mm -hmm. saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. Mm -hmm. And every creature that is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea, and all that are in them are heard say, Blessing and honor and power be to him who sits on the throne, and the Lamb forever and ever. Then the four living creatures say, Amen, and the twenty-four elders fell down and worshiped him who lives forever. So, who owns us? Jesus. Who was described in Revelation 5. He owns us. So if he owns us, Going back over to 1 Corinthians 6. And then we'll go up to verse 7. Now therefore it is already an utter failure for you that go to law against one another. Why do you rather accept wrong? Why do you rather let yourselves be cheated? Right there. Mm -hmm. Why do you let why do you let yourselves be cheated? When the one who sits on the throne mm -hmm. is ready to raise you up. Mm -hmm. Why do you let yourself be cheated out of your inheritance? Why do you allow yourself to be cheated by dealing with the fruits of the enemy? Mm -hmm. 
Why are you letting yourself be cheated out of the fullness of God? The fullness in finances, the fullness in, in your businesses, the fullness on your job. Because God will pull you off a job and give you a business. Mm -hmm. yes, he went for 25 years, I own my own business. I own his business. Mm -hmm. I ran it for him. Mm -hmm. So why do you let yourselves be cheated? No, you yourselves do wrong and cheat. And you do these things also to your brethren. Mm -hmm. Do you not know that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? I'm ready for my inheritance. Amen. Yes, I'm ready for my inheritance, God. I'm tired of being cheated out of the fullness. Yes. I'm tired of living hand to mouth. Yes. I'm tired of eating out of food pantries. Yes. I'm tired of waiting on food stamps, welfare, section 8, yes. checks. I'm tired. I want the check to come to the mail that the government ain't going to give me. Right. Right. I'm going to get the check in my mail that's got more than $385.65. Send me $3,000. $85.65. Send me $300,000. $85.65. Send me that kind of stuff. Don't send me the crumbs. If you give me the crumbs, let me be able to give somebody else the crumbs. Come on now. Come on now. Don't let me worry about how I'm going to get to Topeka, Kansas. On twenty dollars worth of gas, put me on a plane and send me halfway around the world. Yeah, yeah. Don't let us keep one of the crumbs. God's got an inheritance for us, His people, His children, His daughters, His sons. God's got an inheritance. Inheritance is not three hundred eighty-five dollars. That's right. That's right. That's right. An inheritance is an abundance. An yeah. inheritance is something you can leave for your children and your children's children. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We ought to be tired of getting cheated. The enemy is the one teaching us how to be cheated. Yeah. The enemy is the one eating our seeds. Y'all know what a seed eater is? Yeah. Know what a seed eater is? Somebody to eat seeds. Before they can grow. Thank you, sis. Eat your seed. God gives you seeds to plant and somebody eat them up. Your seeds are supposed to be planted so they can grow in your life. So that they can be they can prepare your life for the fullness thereof. All of us have had seed eaters, all of us have been seed eaters. But what God wants us to know in this season, this is the season for release. This is the season where God is ready to release into the hands of his people that which he has for us. He said he allowed this famine to come because he wanted to show the United States of America that they had to turn their faces back to him. That's right. Amen. Thank you. And because we have become such an idolatrous nation, because we have gone a whoring after other gods, the back of the United States is being broken yeah. through the finances. Yes. That's why the stock market was down the other day when they said unemployment. No new jobs were created in the last quarter. Not one new job was created. Do you imagine not one new job being created in a wealthy nation like we have? And you can't give one person a job? That means that all the people that got jobs just kept them. And all the people that didn't have them couldn't get enough. Why do you think, folks, the crime is crazy like it is? But God had to allow the United States to get to a 9.1 unemployment rate in the nation. But check this out. In the black community, it's 16%. Mm -hmm. 16% with all these churches we got. 16% with all this wealth we got in this nation. And we can't get one job in the corner? Mm -hmm. Something's wrong. All the stimulus dollars that they gave yeah. to all these banks and car dealerships. Uh, do you realize that if, if the government had took that money, if Obama had had enough folks giving him wise counsel, he could have took all that money that they gave to every one of those car places and all of those other uh, dealerships, mm -hmm. all those folks at banks, every taxpaying American, how many in here got a job? How many of you had jobs and retired? They count you too. <laughs> had jobs and retired. Every taxpayer American in this room, the government could have given you $275,000. You could have ain't bought a house. 
or be pay off your house or have something. That's right. If they had done right by the money. But no, they want to give the money to the big dealerships, the big car places, and give the, uh, give everybody $300. That's right. And tell you to make it. But they gave them billions and trillions of dollars. They could have took all that money and gave it to every taxpayer in America. We each could have le legitimately got $275,000. That would have paid off any house over here. That's right. That's what they could have done, but they didn't. So the enemy tricked them into doing what they thought was in their own best interest, and it was. And all they did was take that money and make interest on it, and folks still lost their houses. They could have saved every house in America, and our economy would have been in a place where we could be prosperous, we could have folks off of welfare, we could have folks off of Section 8, we could have put that econ our economy in a thrust like never before. Amen. That's fine. But because we refuse to do what the Word of God tells us to do, we are in a worse state now than when they gave them that money three and four years ago. We worse. Not one job was created in this last quarter. And the folks got jobs doing good to hold on to. Two. That's right. Because the back of the United States of America is going to be broken, so it will turn its face back towards God. And that's what's got to happen. So as a people of God, God is ready to do a wealth transfer. The Bible says the wealth of the wicked is related for the righteous. It ain't all about money. It's about wisdom, wisdom. and knowledge. Yes. That's why. Yes. And money. Yes. Yes. That's what God is trying to release into our hands. Yes. It's some wisdom and some knowledge. So yes. when we get the money, we don't be acting foolish. Come on, Come on, them. They go out and buy bling and cars right. and rims and stuff. Hey, around. Yes. 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 But we got to be wise. Yes. God says he's ready to release that wealth into our hands. Yes. But most of us are not in position. This word ought to get you in position. Yes. Begin to put you in position so that you can get ready for that transfer so we can live that free yes. So we can be yes. real that free. Yes. For real. For real, for real. But that transfer will skip some people mm -hmm. if you don't get ready. You'll see your sister with money and you won't have none. You'll see your cousin with money and you won't have none. You'll see your church prospering when the other ones are shutting down. Because Apostle Sarah got a wealth transfer. Not this building down and build a bigger building. Amen. Bought the land over there and the land over here. Mm -hmm. Put in some resources for the community. Mm -hmm. Because she knew what to do with the money. Made herself debt free. Right. And kept on going. Right. Amen. That's right. Thank you, Lord. But it's not going to happen. Until we lower ourselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the lowering, he's not talking about the world lowering themselves. He's not asking the world, what are you willing to give up to go up? He's asking the church. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's the church. It's the people in the church. He's not asking this building. Mm -hmm. He's asking this building. He's asking this house, what are you willing to give up to go up? Yeah. If you don't think God is ready to raise up his people in the next three years, you watch what's about to happen. Come on now. And if you are not in that number that is happening to you, you're going to get left out. You watch what's about to happen in the next three years. Three to five years maximum. There's going to be a serious shift. There's going to be a paradigm shift that happens within the church. And what's going to happen within the church is that they're going to be, it'll be like these three sections. And this section is going to be ready for all that God has. This section is going to be trying to get ready. And this section is not going to be ready. And then this section is going to get mad. And they're going to shift right on out the door. Because they've got to leave. Because they're going to hinder what this, this section is getting ready for. And this section is already doing. Yes. There's going to be a serious shift. And it's going to happen within the church. Yes. So make yourselves mindset ready. Get your mind right. Don't be conformed to the things of this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Stop thinking that because we black or we women or we black men, stop thinking that nothing is ready to happen for us. Stop thinking that we're going to always be poor, or we're going to always be on this, or we're going to stop thinking like that. Amen. That's the mindset that keeps us poor. We've got to be in a position where we can receive 
all that God has for us. And that position begins with sacrifice. Yes. And the last one on my list is Jesus. His divine, Jesus sacrificed his divine right. Yes. He sacrificed his life. Yes. And what was the result? He became the ruler of the universe. Yes. He's the ruler of all things. All things. All, all things. things. All people. Everything. Yes. He's the ruler of all. Yes. He is in all. He yes. is all. He is in all. Yes. all, all. Yes. He's the ruler of all, all things. things. There's nothing that he is not ruler yes. of. There's nothing that he does not own or control. So if you want God to lift you up, what are you willing to give up? Make yourself a list. What are you willing to give up for God to raise you up? What are you willing to give up so God can bring you up, bring you out, bring you through? I'm willing to give up everything. Yeah, that's what I just said. Everything. everything. What, what you want, God? That's right. What you want? Yeah. The question is, what do you want? And as I close, keep this in mind. Some of the stuff you think you need, you really don't have to right. Some of the things you think you got to have, you really don't have to have. Some of the people that are around you, you really don't need. I was talking to a friend who got blessed today. God bless Been making her music all these years. The one person that she thought would be there through it all, who had been there through, through it all, was when she put the ink to that record deal, straightened it up. Broke her heart. She now is in a position to help others. She's now in a position financially to do all that she needs to do. Nobody's signing record deals and making labels right now. Right. The finances are not there. But she got in a position where she did. Major record label. And the one person she thought would always be there is the one person that just straightened it up. Because she was ready for the advance. But they weren't ready. They weren't ready. The mindset wasn't there. You may be ready for promotion. But some of the people around you may not be ready. For you to be promoted. That's right. They may not be ready for you to be promoted. That's true. Therefore, that means that you can't take the music. That's right. Don't drag these people that are not ready into your promotion. Don't drag them in. If you drag them in, you're going to catch a hit. You know? Because you'll be pulling and dragging. And the whole time that you're pulling and dragging, they'll be sabotaged. They will be spiritual saboteurs of your destiny. And God may have to shut you down so you can learn to let them go. If you drag them in, God may have to shut it down until you can learn to let them go. Because they're not your friends, they're not your, 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 your buddies, your partners, they're none of that. You may have to leave some behind. There will be some that God has to move, and there will be some that God has to remove. The different being is this. Those that God moves, they go on for a season. Yeah. Those that God removes, they just know. Yeah, yes, they, go. they just know. Hey, That's why this building, God had to remove some spiritual saboteurs. Because they were sabotaging the vision of the woman of God in the spirit. They were sabotaging the move of God in the spirit land. Which means they could have been praying against the plot and against the all of it. Yes. But nevertheless, they were spiritual sacrifices. Mm -hmm. So God had to remove them. And then there were those that were sitting on this side that couldn't figure out if they was ready or wasn't ready. Mm -hmm. They could they were back vacillating back between the two opinions. So finally they got out of the seat over here and moved to the seat closer to the door. Mm -hmm. So by the time they got over to that door, they just went on out the door. Right. <laughs> 
because they wasn't ready for him on this side. Yeah. So he just eased them over back to this section and screwed them all out that door. Mm. There's something that he had to move. There's something that he had to remove. Yeah. Don't concern yourself with those that he removed. Amen. They were the spiritual saboteurs in the first place. Yeah. Amen. 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 And it was Ahab. And they were operating together Ooh. in the spirit to shut this down. Don't Ooh. concern yourself if they don't. Because you better believe whatever they do and wherever they at, it yeah. ain't working out like they thought. Amen. Amen. That's right. So God sent them right on out the door. So now he can begin to refill. He can begin to rebuild. He can begin to bring in those that are really hungry. Those that are really thirsty. Those that really want to put their hand to the plow. Because a lot of them was up in here wasn't putting their hand to the plow. Amen. They, was, they put their hand by the plow. Right. Maybe she'll think I got my hand on the plow. Maybe right. she'll think I'm working. Maybe she'll think I'm doing it. But those with their hands to the plow, they up in here right now. Amen. 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 Still ready to keep pushing. What you want to do? What's next, Pastor? What's next? What God said do next. That's why their hand's still on the plow. And they're ready for whatever God says. For this next dimension, because God must start putting you in levels. Right, right. He's got you in a dimensional faith. Amen. So whatever this next dimensional shift that's coming, these folks that are here are ready. They ready. It don't do. One can chase a thousand, two can chase ten thousand. You got enough up in here, we can do thousands and thousands. Right. right. Yeah. Even mother was back there chasing thousands. Right. Yeah. 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 So, out the door, even, even in the last two weeks, there was something vacillated back, got mad, mm -hmm. and went back out the door. Mm -hmm. They come back, but they really went back. Right. Yeah. The old song, your body's here with me, but your but mind is on the other side of town. town. Okay. <laughs> Somebody wants to sit over here because their mind was somewhere else and their spirit showing in the building. Right. Amen. 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 But that saboteur spirit mm -hmm. tried to ease back in. Mm -hmm. Tried to make you feel bad. Mm -hmm. Tried to make you think that you were doing something right or whatever mm -hmm. it was. That saboteur spirit mm -hmm. tried to say, oh, this ain't right. The devil is Amen. 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 Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the shift. Yes, God. We thank you for how you're doing what you're doing. Yes, We may not understand what you're doing, but we know you do. We may not understand the time of the season right now, but in our due season, we shall reap a harvest if we faint not. We shall reap a harvest yeah. if we don't sit down and listen to the naysayers and the player haters and the seed eaters. Yeah. We shall reap a harvest if we stand on the strength of your word. Mm. Strong you. and mighty to you. And every time a stronghold tries to come up in here, we pull it down. Yeah. Casting down every imagination that tries to exalt itself against the knowledge of you, Elder Father. Yeah. We thank you right now for the people here with their hands to the plow. Yeah. We thank you right now, God, that as the ship comes, that they are in position. Mm -hmm. We thank you right now, God, that as you move through them, that God, you will show them the direction to go. That they won't be running up to the front. They will only be asked to the back. They'll sit back in the back, Father, and wait for you to promote them. They'll sit back, God, in the back and wait for you to bring them to the front. To wait till you exalt them. Yeah. Wait for you to raise them up. God, we thank you right now that you give us the wisdom how to sit back and wait. Thank you. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. Woo! We shall run and not be weary. God, when we run it for you, we won't get weary. When we run it for you, we won't shut down. We won't shut up. We won't shut down. We won't be quiet. We will not be stopped. We shall run and not be weary. We shall walk, God, and not faint. We shall be steppers for the kingdom of God. For the kingdom of heaven serves violence, and we, the violence, are going to take it by force. God, we ready for our inheritance. We ready for the paradigm shift that says our inheritance awaits us. Come on and receive your inheritance so that you can build the kingdom of God. Father, we ready to build the kingdom of God. And we promise you we won't be buying bling and bling and bling. 
We promise you we won't be gambling off your money, wasting off your money. We promise you that we will be good stewards of what you entrust us with. And Father, as you build the kingdom through life abundant ministries, through in his written ministries, and through those houses of God that truly belong to you. As you build it, God, touch every person in this building. Father, that everywhere their hands touch, you give them increase. Touch every person in the building, that everywhere they put their hands, God, there's increase, there's prosperity, there's growth, there's life. Everywhere they put their hands to, there's life, God. Everywhere they put their hands to, you get the glory. Everywhere that this ministry goes, Life Abundant Ministries, the apostolic calling on Pastor Sarah's life. God, every apostolic move that you give her, let there be an abundant increase. Not just for Life Abundant Ministries, but for the kingdom of God. Not just for our Life Abundant Ministries, but for every person in this building. Father, not just for every person in this building, but especially for your faithful servant, Apostle Sarah Life. Everything that you give her, God, let it be an increase in her life. Let her live debt free. Let her walk debt free. Let her show others how to be debt free and still be a blessing to the kingdom of God. We don't always have to go into debt to do your work. So God, I ask you in the name of Jesus to even let every person in this room experience a debt free life, including myself, God. Let us be debt free. So that we can further do your work because we can't do your work in bondage. Now in the name that is above every name, Father God, that name is Jesus. We bless you, we praise you, we glorify you, we magnify you, and we thank you, God, that we are willing to give up everything to receive all from you. We are ready to sacrifice, God, to receive the fullness of God. In the name of Jesus, let every heart say, Amen, Amen, Amen. 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 God for that word, amen. Thank you, Lord. And we were just discussing that, talking, and you know, amen. God verify everything he said, amen. amen. And I just prayed God for it, amen. And we, I just said, I mean, I, I'm, I, I'm unspeakable, amen. 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 I can't say anything Thank what you. God has already said, and I thank God for that, amen, amen. and what was spoken. Thank I mean, we just had a conversation. Amen, it sure was. Jeff and you, God just came and spoke well, exactly what he did to hear, amen. amen. And I just thank God for that, amen. amen. What you willing to give up, amen. amen. What you willing to give up, amen, for God's kingdom, for what God wants to be done on the earth, his kingdom be built, amen. And I thank God that you don't have to do anything he did is all clear. He don't want to put you in position. And when he puts you there, no man can take you down, amen. I thank God for that word, amen. I'm telling you, Sam, now you just come on with me. Amen. Encouragement, really encouraging. I mean, I, I'm more encouraged today than I was the other day. Amen. 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 We get closer to the model. Amen. 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 Thank, Thank you, Lord. Jesus. I just love the Lord. Amen. Amen. I just praise Him for I'm just excited, y'all. All about nobody if I got mine today. Amen. 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 Lena, what you're going through is for the better. Amen. Amen. God, Pam, what you're going through is for your better. Amen. Amen. Because God got a reward for you later on. Amen. Amen. And no man Amen. can take your reward. Amen. 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 I like that. Nobody can put you up there and nobody can take you down. If God put you down, no man can take you down. Absolutely. Amen. All you will do is kill your eyes. Amen. You bring yourself down. She said, these things we need to leave alone. If it don't belong to you, don't bother. Amen. Don't touch it. If it ain't yours, leave it alone. That's what she Girl, go I can't go there. <laughs> That's why I ain't going to go there. I ain't going because I got inheritance coming to me. Come on now. 